We give you glory. We give you honor. Hallelujah. Please, you may be seated. Let's get straight into the word. Father, we ask that you teach us tonight. Your word will be a blessing to everyone under the sound of our voice. Bless our audience tonight. In Jesus' name, we pray. Now, we are continuing from where we stopped on, test, on Sunday. And we've been teaching on the leading of the Spirit. And we said a few things that I need to give a recap on. And we said that worry is not of the Spirit. That worry is a thief of the guidance of the Spirit. When you worry, worry will lead you or will steal from you. It moves you away from the leading of the Spirit. There is no way worry and the leading of the Spirit can go hand in hand. It is not possible. Worry will actually steal the leading of the Spirit away from you. And we said that worries actually comes from what the world offers. You remember we said that the cares of this world are the reason for worry. We use Mark 13 to explain how that when the seed is sown, because of the deceitfulness of riches and the cares of this world, it chokes the knowledge of the Spirit. And we know that there is no worry in the Spirit. When it comes to the Spirit, there is no worry. You know, in the Psalms, or in the Psalms, you keep hearing words such as, Be still and know that I am God. Because there's no worry in the Spirit. When you get to the arena of worry, all you need to do, do everything within you, arrest the source of worry, and then calm yourself so that you can understand the leading of the Spirit of God. Praise the name of the Lord. We said, the less worry you are, the more you can experience the leading of the Spirit. We said that on Sunday. But we'll take it off from there tonight because we'll be talking a little more from that area. We're starting our text again from Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. Philippians 4 verse 6. We're taking it off from there tonight. Philippians and chapter 4 he said, be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. The word be careful for nothing simply means be worried about nothing. Worry prevents us from paying attention to the leading of the Spirit. And that is why the Bible enjoins us to be careful for nothing. We should not take up worry. We should not take up anxiety. The reason is when we pay attention to anxiety, it is a thief of the guidance of the spirit. And we have a typical example to look at tonight, which is Luke's gospel, chapter 10. We'll be reading from verse 40. But my emphasis will be on 41 and 42. How that man by worry can miss the mark. Men by worry can miss the real thing. Quite a number of people have missed the real thing in life because they never paid attention to their spirit. Instead, they gave attention to the cares of this world. He said, but Martha was combat about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister had left me to serve alone? Be it hard, therefore, that she helped me. Jesus had come to the house of Mary and Martha, but Martha was so cumbered. Now, I'd like for us to use another rendering. Leave it verse 44. We'll use two different renderings because we want to look at the word cumbered. And that is where we're taking it up from tonight. Another rendering says, but Martha was so distracted. And this is what worry does. Worry distracts us from the leading of the Spirit. The Bible says, but Martha was so distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. Message rendering. Now the word combat is that he was carried away. She was carried away. She was distracted. And that's what message rendering said, but Martha was pulled away. And this is exactly what worries offers us. Worry has a way of taking our attention away from the real thing. Now, we'll get back to KJV and we'll get to the next verse. The things you worry about are actually a distraction to the leading of the Spirit. He said, oh, pastor, I just thought it would be Spirit, Spirit, Spirit. 
the leading of the spirit is not needed in heaven, it's needed on earth. And as long as you're on earth, there are several things that want to have your attention. And they are the reason for the cares of this world. They come by way of distracting you. And look at what, what, what verse 40 said. But Martha was cumbered about much serving. So what took her attention was what she was to serve. Verse 41 says, And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. And this is what has hampered the flow or the leading of the spirit with many individuals. They are careful and of course they are troubled about many things. They trouble about their homes. They trouble about their finances. They trouble about things they ought not to trouble about. And yet at the same time they want to enjoy the leading of the spirit. But Jesus said, Mata, Mata. Thou art careful. Would you give me NLT and of course message rendering? I'm doing this deliberately because this is how worries actually distract us and then does not help the guidance of the spirit. Pastor, I've been listening to messages on how you can be led. Fantastic message. But we need to bring it to the world where we live in that as much as you need the guidance of the spirit, you don't need it in the spirit. You need it here on earth. And there are several things that we want to distract you from enjoying the guidance of the spirit. NLT put it this way. But the Lord said to her, My dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. You are worried and... Come on, I rebuke worries in the name of Jesus. When you worry about too many things, you are not likely to enjoy the guidance of the Spirit. When you worry about too many things, like we said on Sunday, worry becomes a thief of the leading of the Spirit. It takes you away from the real thing. So Jesus spoke to Martha. And what did Jesus say? say Jesus said, there Martha, you are fusing far too much and getting yourself worked up. When you get yourself worked up in this life, it will choke the word of God in you. It will choke the leading of the spirit in you. And no wonder quite a number of people are finding it difficult. When we talk about, oh, we receive the promised spirit. Oh, we have limited the Holy Spirit to speaking in tongues. Good and fine. But beyond speaking in tongues, he wants to witness to us and to help us navigate through the journey of life. Unfortunately, because of the cares of this world, and of course the deceitfulness of riches, that they come to choke the things we learn, and then we are given to worry. And the Bible says, it's a fusing far too much, and getting yourself worked up. A lot of people are getting worked up. Oh, I wish my husband would just be here to get... No. Sometimes, they steal and know that I am God. In 1 Kings chapter 19, Elijah needed to hear from God. He felt God was going to be in the wind. He felt God was going to be in the thunder. He felt God would speak as at other time. But the Bible says God was in the still small voice. In the midst of noise and confusion. Not that God is not speaking, but the things around will hamper your hearing or, lead, or the leading of the spirit. God speaks all the time. But the things we allow around us... They have a way of taking our attention away from receiving from God. Somebody say, I live above worry. My heart is stayed on him. You know, Mama quoted the scripture in the course of prayer. He said, that will keep him in perfect peace. Whose heart is stayed on thee because thou trusted in him. And that's in, uh, in Isaiah 26 verse 3. That will keep him in perfect peace. Whose heart is stayed on you. You, you must... You must Keep your heart on him. And that is how to enjoy the leading of the spirit. And quite a number of people are not enjoying this. And sometimes they say, oh, the devil. No, sometimes before you pray, deal with worry. Say that with me. Say, before I pray, I must deal with worry. So mother was so careful about many things. And you are not supposed to pay attention to many things. You must focus on what you want and not focus on everything. Matter focus on everything. 
And this is how to enjoy the leading of the Spirit, being focused on what you trust Him for. You can't be about everything and then still pay attention to the leading of the Spirit. And the frustration is this. People end up getting into worry and from worries, several other things will open up. Among other, among other things that will open up when we give ourselves to worry is what is in Philippians chapter 2, verse number 14. Or maybe in 1 Corinthians 10.10. 10. But maybe we start from Philippians chapter 2, 14 or 1 Corinthians 10.10, 10, whichever. But when we don't deal with the issue of worries, anxiety, the cares of life, getting upset, and fusing about many things. These are the things that happen. Do everything readily and cheerfully. No bickering. The word bickering here is talking about no murmuring. When we allow worries, the next thing that follows must be murmuring. I mean, when we allow worries, the next thing that follows is bickering. That is murmuring. And what is murmuring? These are the things we say to ourselves when nobody is there. Oh God. Oh God. Can you just put this so succinctly? He said, do all things without murmuring and disputing. Now, because when we don't keep or when we don't check anxiety, among other things that we will experience will be worry. I mean, murmuring. Which, I love the way he put the big green. Okay, oh God, oh God. Sometimes on your own, nobody is there. You all by yourself. How I wish this thing. When we this thing, in the case of Martha, she had the courage of going to meet Jesus to say, Master, don't you care? That, uh, as, as a matter of fact, you should tell my sister to join me. Now, only God knows what she had said all by herself before she met the Master. And this is what, that, that is where the problem lies. When we don't check cares, when we don't check anxiety, when we don't check worry, they are very likely to lead us to murmuring. We start murmuring. Now, the people who were trusting God for guidance, people who were trusting God for leading, oh God, because you see, the leading of the Spirit is already in us. Let me say that again. The leading of the Spirit is already, already in us. How is the leading of the Spirit in us? The Holy Spirit is in us. So, we are not looking for God to lead us from outside. God leads us from inside. So, he's already in us. But you see, the things external to us have a way of making us not to pay attention to the leading we already have inside. And when we don't pay attention to the leading inside, we'll begin to worry. From worry, we'll get into murmuring. Now, let's still leave it in Philippians and chapter 2, verse 14. Let's deal with that. Because when we don't deal with this, the leading of the Spirit becomes, you know, a mirage. It becomes abstract to us. He said, but I love the way pastor taught it. But I have not enjoyed it. You have not enjoyed it because you have not dealt with cares. You have not dealt with worries. You have not dealt with anxiety. Once you arrest those things and then begin to... Once cares, worries, anxiety, they are handled, the likelihood that murmuring will not get there, will not come here is there. Am I communicating? But where we fail to handle cares, anxiety... Worries, the next thing that steps in must be murmuring because from worries, oh, and then we start speaking to ourselves, and before we know it, we'll extend it to others. And look at how he put it do how many things? Come on, do how many things? So, when I even trust God to begin a job or to begin a business or trusting God on what step to take next. I must do everything without murmuring. It means that anxiety has been captured. Worries have been captured. He said, do all things without murmuring and disputing. You get into argument. No, God, but your word said, and this is what we are seeing in charismatic circle. I've seen some people shout, God, I'm a tighter. I'm a giver. I've even heard people say, I'm a dangerous giver. Who is asking you to say all those things? From worries, People are getting into murmuring. And from murmuring, they are getting into disputing. As a matter of fact, they are even getting into a fight. God, you know who I am. Can I have an entry rendering of this? They, they started. But all of these things, the root is from worry. And when worry is not checked, murmuring has entered. And before you know it, arguing. 
Look up, please. He said, do everything without complaining. And what? Arguing. You see, from that worry, since it was not checked, it gets into complaining. They start murmuring. But God said, but God said, at the end, at the beginning of this year, God told me. At the be- God told you be still and know that he's still God. It is not by murmuring. It's not by bickering. It's not by fusing. It's not by, as a matter of fact, arguing. And nobody's even with you. You are all by yourself. And you're saying everything. As though the word of God will not come true in your life. The reason you behave this way is because you have not dealt with worry. Once worry is handled, when anxiety is handled, the leading of the spirit becomes so easy for you. Why men find it difficult to move and to follow the guidance of the spirit is because they have not handled first things, but they want to start from the last rung of the ladder. But the first thing to do, deal with worries before you pray. And that's why the Bible says, be careful for nothing. But in everything, prayer, supplication. You see, before prayer came, the issue of worry had been dealt with. If worry is not dealt with, you can still pray and worry. I've seen people praying and they are worried in the midst of prayer. How many, how many persons has it happened to? It has happened to me. Every one of us, we have had a fair share of that experience. I've had occasion in my early days. And sometimes it happens to me. I need to discipline my mind. Am I communicating? I discipline myself. Like Paul said, I bring myself under. You just have to discipline myself. I remember many years ago, my father had been shot in the area where we live in Benin City. And then because he had been shot, they rushed him to the hospital. Thank God he survived it. They were trying to operate on him to get the bullets out of his body. However, to cut a long story short, he recovered, got home. And while at home, they had to come up with a vigilante group. And then he was part of the vigilante group. And every Friday was his turn because he was a landlord there. So for the landlord, it was every Friday. And then, in my own case, once it's Friday, from 12 in the night, I'm awake. The reason I'm awake is because my father is among the landlord that will be keeping the night watch. And what do I do? While I work, I'll be peeping through the window to help my father because of the last experience. You see, the cares of this world can give you worry. Worry does not come from the spirit. The worry comes from the cares of this world. And so because of the last incident, I stay by the window and I'm peeping, watching. And then the next thing, you see me speaking in tongues. And then I'm praying in the spirit. From praying in tongues, I've forgotten what I was praying about. And then I'm worried because I've either seen a movement around and then I'm afraid. Hope the last experience will not come back again. Am I communicating here today? Worry does not come from the spirit. It comes from your word. Am I communicating? So what do you do? Deal with it. Everybody say, deal with it. Come on, talk to me. Say, deal with worries. Before you, before you pray. And this is where many have failed. Many have refused to deal with worries. And what they f- jump into first is prayer. Pastor Andrew, can you imagine people, instead of dealing with worries, the first thing they do, they pray. Your prayer does not send worries packing. Can I say that again? Prayer does not send worries packing. Prayer will either aggravate it because in the curse of you praying, you end up worrying while you are praying. Just like I did many years ago. But the first thing I do, he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Once I have that settled, I can stand on the ground of who my father is. And I can speak, and victory is mine. Glory be to God forever. Let me have another rendering of this before we check the first Corinthians. But are you getting something tonight? Hallelujah. So the leading of the Spirit is not strange to us. Because the Spirit is in us. It's not strange. But you see, why most people are not enjoying the leading of the Spirit is because of the cares of this world. The worries of this world. The anxiety. And it grows into don't you have any other rendering outside of bickery? Eh? Amplified. Let me have amplified. And so it leads to something else, which is murmuring. Come on. When you handle worries, you are likely to deal with murmuring too. But when you have not handled that, he said, do all things without grumbling. Our fault finding. You see, this is exactly what happened. Like I said before, God, at the beginning of this year, you told me this. Now, have you also noticed that people, instead of dealing with issues right before them, they start looking for other people to finger 
as, a, as their problem. Hey, you did this to me. Is it not Pastor Andrew? Is Pastor Andrew that is making you to behave like this? No. Deal with the issue and stop looking for fault. Am I communicating? He said, when you see people saturated with worries, they get into fault finding too. They get into murmuring, complaining. Then they start looking for, who is responsible for my problem? And that is what is happening in our world. You see, this is, when people don't want to give attention to the word of God, they end up in the hands of charlatans. Men who will tell them, hmm, your father is responsible for your problem. Because you have not even understood the leading of the spirit. So you just, hey, I said it. I had a dream. I saw my father. Couldn't you have seen your father before? Or shouldn't you see your father? And what is even bad if you saw your father? Am I communicating? Is he not your father, by the way? But you see, wrong teaching actually affects the kind of dream you have. Can I say that again? Wrong teaching informs the kind of dream you have. Once you start having such wrong teachings, where you start finding fault, and before you know, you start having dreams of such personalities. And before long, you start blaming them for everything that happens around you. But the truth of the matter is, when we deal with worries, then there won't be room for murmuring, bickering, for finding, complaining. Now, let's read it the way it is. It said, do all things without grumbling and fault finding and complaining against God. Does it happen in our time? Have you seen charismatic boast? I'm a titan. It's as if God should come, they will tear God. I don't know if you understand. He cannot, I've even seen people shouting at the title. What they were shouting about actually went bad and nothing happened to it again. You see, they've got into a place where they have not handled worry. They have allowed murmuring to enter. And then argument has come. The argument now, complaining, is between them and God. It's as if if I see God now, we'll deal with him. You know, the first step, they have refused to handle worry and they cannot enjoy the leading of the spirit. The guidance of the spirit is there. The spirit of God is domiciled in them. They, the spirit of God endured them. As a matter of fact, you are God's embassy. Can I say that again? You are God's embassy. Anybody that wants to see God needs to come to, through you. You are God's embassy. But people can allow the cares of this world. The deceitfulness of riches. Hey, my children, how will they go to school? Hey, how will this thing happen? No. If he takes care of the birds, he takes care of you. His eyes are all on the sparrows. He, he put it so succinctly. He said, how many sparrows are sold for a farthing? That's to tell you how worthless they are. He said, God is still interested in them. No matter how worthless they are, God is interested. How much more you? O oh, ye of little faith. This is where man needs to drop worry. We need to drop worry so we can enjoy the leading of the spirit. Glory be to God forever. He said, against God and questioning and doubting among yourselves. So you must do things without grumbling, for finding, complaining against God. And the next thing, you start questioning and of course doubting. When you get to this arena, you start doubting everything. Even the things you once believed, you start doubting them. Because you allowed worry. And that's what Philippians 4 says. Be careful for nothing before you pray. Deal with anxiety before you pray. Oh, you know, I'm a spirit brown. I'm, I'm one cut out of fire. Man, koto. You can do all of that. If you have not dealt with, be careful for nothing. You have not prayed. Can I say that again? If you have not dealt with, be careful for nothing. But well, you have not. But in other but in everything, by prayer now, supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Now, because if you have not dealt with worries, in the midst of that, your prayer, you will argue, you will complain, you will speak against God, you will doubt. Now, look at the next verse, verse seven. Well, you brought me here. I'll see. Come back. I'll go back to where we're coming from. Look at the result of praying without worry. Look at the result of praying without worry. Next verse, verse seven, quickly. The result of praying without worry. Hear what the Bible says, verse seven. And the peace of God. Now, why would the peace of God? Because worry has been handled. Glory be to God. Come on. I want you to take a deep breath. <sighs> Breathe in. 
Say, I have no cause to worry. Say, my father is in charge. Come on, can we take a deep breath again? The peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind. They are run of worry through Christ Jesus. Why? Because you handled worry first. Everybody say, I choose to handle worry. And as such, worry has no place in me. Who is the first to say amen here? Alright, let's run through. Take me back to my initial scripture. And then, because of time, so that we just wrap it up. And then on Sunday, maybe we'll be putting uh, uh, finishing touches to this great topic we started on this uh, promised spirit. Now, take me back to Philippians and chapter 2 verse 14. Have we read that? Or 1 Corinthians 10, 10. You know where you brought me from. 1 Corinthians 10, 10. Let us get back there and we'll just uh, take a little more and we're true. Hallelujah. We must be careful not to stir up discontent. Discontent destroy them. Where are we now? I just, do you, do you like this one? You, you like the rendering? Give me another rendering. You know, sometimes message can just give a wrong message. Do all things. Uh, leave it to me, Anna. Neither mama ye are some of them also mormon. Now, what is the end product or result of mormon? So, some people are destroyed because they didn't deal with worries. It degenerated to murmuring, and at the end of the day, it's a witch in their village. But look at how the Bible puts it. It said, neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and we are destroyed of the destroyer. Who is the destroyer? The devil. So the devil is behind worry, and from there, when it degenerates, you are giving him opportunity to operate in your life. The same way we have the leading of the spirit, the same way the devil wants to take you away. Distract you. Take you away from your place. Give me... Okay, good. He said, nor should you, we complain as some of them did and we are killed by the destroyer. We know the destroyer for he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you have life. Now take note. How did the destroyer come? When we fail to handle worry, it degenerated to murmury and complaining. And then we opened up. At the end of the day, he said, but pastor, we started that church. I can tell you the history of that church. Look at my head. We were the one carrying sand and block. We built that church. Where is that God? Eh -eh. It is not where is that God. It's which God have you known? It's not the God of man you are called to know. Is the God of the Bible you are called to know. Did you hear what I just said? You are not called to know the God of any man. See, the God of this commission. <laughs> Something is wrong with you. You should know the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, not the God of a commission. Can I say that again? You should know the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, not the God of a commission. Because God is not localized to a commission. He's a universal God. And he's a father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory be to God forever. Now, we'll begin to summarize tonight by using this. He said, no, discontentedly complain as some of them did and were put out of the way entirely by the destroyer. That destroyer was death. When we get to that level, you see, it's, it's, a, it's a thief of the leading of the spirit. Worry. Worry is a thief of the guidance of the spirit. And we need to talk about it because we can tell you the, 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 how you can enjoy the leading of the spirit without teaching you on not, not dealing with distraction. These are the distractions, the things that will hinder the flow of the spirit, the leading of the spirit, the guidance of the spirit. Glory be to God forever. I choose not to worry. I say I choose not to worry. I refuse to worry. Everything is falling in place for me. The lines are falling in places and places. Yea, I have goodly heritage. Ah, great grace is upon me. My inheritance is in the saints, in light. Everything I will ever need, 
has been has, has been supplied abundantly. God who created me made a no provision before I came forth. My God supplies. My God supplies. I have no need to worry. Glory be to God. Now, have you, can you see when we handle this, the guidance of the Spirit becomes like this. Where worry, anxiety, cares are handled, man. And look, look at irrespective of the fact that all of these things are in place already. Look at Ephesians 1:13. Let me remind you of what has happened in you. But with what has happened in you, if you don't handle these things, those things will be there, and yet you will not enjoy it. Ephesians 1:13. I'll just quickly read through uh, four scriptures of five. Ephesians 1:13, Ephesians 2:22. It said, "In whom you also trusted." After you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in the same gospel of salvation, in whom also, after you believe, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit. So you are already sealed, but it is a choice you make not to worry. You are sealed with the Spirit, but worry cannot say, because you are sealed with the Spirit, I walk away. It is as a matter of fact, because of the seal of the Spirit, that worry wants to distract you. Am I communicating? Ephesians 2.22 Quickly we'll just run through them. I want, it says, In whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God. Through where? Are we built together? Through what? You can imagine the spirit that has enabled this building. Yet, what he say? I would make sure they don't enjoy the leading of the spirit by distracting them. 1 John 3.24 1 John 3, 24, very quickly. I just want us to run through. You see, with all these things in place, and yet, what is it? He said, and he that keepeth his commandment dwelleth in him, and he in him. I hereby know that he abided in us. How do we know? By the spirit which he had given to us. Question, has he given us the spirit? Yes, sir. Who will handle worry? How we handle worry? Has he given us the spirit? Yes. Who we handle worry? What will worry do to the leading of the spirit? It will distract us. It will distract, destroy us. You see, worry has always been a thief of the guidance of the spirit. Believers have the spirit living them. But worry is a thief of that guidance. You worry about everything. Even when God speaks, you cannot, you don't under, you don't hear. Not because he's not speaking, but because you are hearing other things. And that's what worry does. It makes you hear other things than to hear the voice of God. Can I say that again? Worry makes you hear other things rather than hear the voice of God. Hallelujah. Chapter 4, verse 13. Well, it's 1 John 4, 13. 1 John 4, 13. I'm just trying to explain the fact that though we are seen with the Spirit, we have the Spirit, we've been given the Spirit, we've received the Spirit, we are not of the flesh, but look at, he said, hereby know we that we dwell in him. How do we know? That is, he is in us because he had given us of his spirit. So we know we are together. We are one with him because of his spirit. Though you and I have the spirit, he dwells in us. What is? Come on. Everybody say, I choose not to worry because of what I carry. I have God. The spirit of God is in me. And he speaks. I hear him. Because I refuse to hear worry. No repeat to God forever. You see how it goes. And the last scripture I read is Jude. Jude and verse 19 and 20. We read it a lot. Yeah, sometimes we read it from verse 16. But because of time. Let's read it from verse 19. He dead with men who are in the flesh. And he made a contrast with men who are in the spirit. Look at how he put the Jude 9, verse 19. Jude is just one book. Jude 1 verse 19 and 20. Maybe you want it that way. It's just the book before Revelation. Look at it. Everybody read with me. These be they who separate themselves. Who are they? Who are they? Come on, talk to me. Who are they? They use senses. They don't use spirit. Who are they? Come on, use the word sensual. Are you afraid to pronounce it? Who are they? Come on, shout it. Who are they? They have the senses. He said, having. 
So you cannot operate sensually and spiritually. But the next verse is, for you, verse 20. Verse 20. Look at how, verse 20. But ye, beloved. Those of us in the spirit, we are beloved. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Because the Bible says, he that prayed in an unknown tongue, his spirit prayed. So every time we pray in the tongues, our spirit, because that is where we are. That is our abode. That is our habitat. Natural habitat. Glory be to God forever. So as much as all these things are in place, when we don't handle worry, 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 if we don't handle worry, it has a way of dealing with us. Hallelujah. So how do I deal with worry? Point one, and then I will continue on Sunday. James 1.19, and I'll see you on Sunday. Because our time is fast running. I have five minutes more to be true. James 1.19 is how you handle worry. Glory to God. James 1.19. Blessed tonight. Hope your coming to church was not a waste tonight. James 1.19. Hallelujah. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear. One next again. And slow. This is how to handle it. Everything you hear is swift. But slow to speak. Don't rush. Be in control. Say, I'm in control of every situation. Why? I am quick to hear. I'm slow to speak. I'm slow for wrong action. This is how to deal with it. Now, give me two different renderings so that maybe we'll break this down. Hallelujah. Another rendering, please. NLT. My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick, but slow. And slow. When we get to this level, we have checked all these things. Did you hear what happened? Yes. What next? Say, calm down. Don't rush. Then you would have seen it completely. You would have had a better view before you know how to speak and before you know how to take action. But there are persons, he said, we should not be like the horse or the moon. I think that is in the book of uh, uh, Psalm 32, verse 18. Let's read Psalm 32, 18. I'm sure. Psalm 32, 18 is not just part of my note, but I get it. Psalm 32, 18, let's check. No, it's not 18, verse number 9. Psalm 32, let's read from verse 8. Verse 8 and 9. Psalm, is it? The Lord says, I will guide you along the best path for your life. Thank you for saying amen. Can I say, read that again? The Lord says, I will guide you along the best path for your life. Amen. I will advise you and watch over you. Amen. But look at the next verse. Do not be like a senseless horse or a moo that needs a beef and bridle to keep it under control. Church, look up. When you read a senseless horse, what comes to your mind? When a man saddles on the horse and he gives the horse a whip, what happens to the horse? The horse will jump up. The horse does not have direction. It is a man on top of the horse that gives direction. And most of these senseless horses, he said, don't behave like them. That is to say, don't be quick at taking action. Come on. Don't be quick at taking action. Because it's sad on the horse. The, the horse doesn't even, it will not take the man on top to start directing, giving direction. 
and that is why how some believers live are the slightest thing that happen <laughs> He said, but brethren, James 1, 19, slow, quick to hear, slow to speak. Don't rush out. Should I use another rendering? Maybe we'll get a rendering that will help me. Give me the, another rendering of verse 9, and then we'll read that, James. I think my time is up. Quickly. Which rendering is this? Is it CNIT? Okay. He said, do... Be ye not as the horse or as the moon, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with beat and bridle, at least they come nigh unto thee. This is the same like the King James. So think of a better rendering to give to me before we close. Huh? Yes, it's like the energy, sorry, that's what I mean. Don't be honorary. Like a horse. No, he still does. He said, um, he still does it. Don't be stupid. Like a horse or a moon, which must be controlled. That's the point I'm looking for. How come people will be on the road before they start looking for direction? You can get direction before you set out. Can I say that? Can I say that again? How come it is when people run out before they start looking for where, which way? But you can actually know the way before you run out. The life of the horse is that it has no direction, but it will jump out. But you can actually determine your direction before you jump out. Am I communicating? And that is what James was trying to say. James 1.19 will use different rendering because we have read it already. And then we we'll draw the curtain for tonight. But I'm sure somebody is blessed. And those of you that are watching by way of internet, I believe you have been blessed. And Sunday promises to be wonderful. Wherefore, beloved, we have we read King James? We have not read King James. He said, My beloved, let every man, how many men? All of us, be quick to hear. But what shouldn't we be quick about? We shouldn't be quick to speak. That's not to speak. You can be quick to hear. But you must determine direction before you speak. Don't be like the horse. The horse. Foop. <laughs> no. You can hear quickly, but your action, calm down. Praise God. Give me another rendering. I'm done. I'll see you on Sunday. I just do this. We'll pray and have a very good night rest. You have knowledge of these, their brothers. But let every man be quick. How many men? Oh. Slow. Now, James said, if any man offend not, where do they offend? They offend in words. That is why you must be slow. Because offenses begins with in words. <laughs> Did you not see the way that sister does? A very simple thing. I just asked him about this. He just she spoke to me rashly. Oh. Calm. The psalmist said, be still. Receive quietness in your spirit. You didn't hear me. I said, receive quietness in your spirit. Don't be rash. Don't be in a hurry. Learn to speak. When you to speak, how to speak. The Bible says, let your words be seasoned with salt. That it will minister grace to the hearers. Let it be. Who? Post this. And all the intercessions. Dear friends, lead with your ears. Follow with your tongue. And let anger strangle along in the rear. He has just described your car. Get to the intercession. <laughs> Lead like this. That is your driving. He's just showing you how you drive through this life. Be quick to hear. This is how to enjoy the leading of the Spirit. And quite a lot of people have made a shipwreck of it. You say, how come? And that is, this is why you hear people, when you just hear a prophet is in town, they run to the person. A noisy prophet is prophesying to you. He's actually speaking from a strange spirit to you. Because you don't need noisy people to speak into your life. 
You just uh, they jump around. Hey, 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 you. I'm seeing. Are you from Rivers? Say, because they need you to guide them. Are you from Rivers? Say, yes. I'm seeing somewhere towards towards Akwaibo. You are from Ogoni. From Ogoni. Say yes. Have we met before? He said no. 